In this video, I'm going to take some time to brief you on a variety of noteworthy recent Fallout 4 mods. First, in relation to gameplay, I'd like to introduce Drivables of the Commonwealth, Wasteland Havoc. This mod is an add-on to the Havoc physics vehicles, which we've previously introduced on this channel, and it adds eight more Wasteland-style vehicles. These vehicles use Havoc physics, and you can drive them yourself and load cargo onto them. One of the features of games like GTA or Battlefield, which use firearms, is the presence of drivable vehicles. However, one of the drawbacks of Fallout 4 is the lack of transport other than the Vertibird, and Havoc Physics Vehicles is a strong mod to address this. I have been paying quite a bit of attention to this mod, and the Wasteland Havoc mod adds more vehicles, which are easier to drive because they have less body than a truck and come in a variety of types. However, due to the terrain of the Commonwealth, there are too many obstacles and not enough roads, making it quite difficult to drive vehicles, especially the larger the Havoc object, the harder it was, and I thought it might be a good idea to add a small car like a one-seater mini car to improve driving efficiency. Nevertheless, I thought it was necessary to introduce this mod to you. It was quite fun to play with this mod, as you can shock enemies and kill enemies like ghouls by hitting them with a vehicle, but there is also a bug that restricts movement when you die in a car and reload, so you need to be careful when using this mod. Next up is Boone Island Isles of New England. This mod offers a new world space based on a real island. It's based on Boone Island, a real island located between Boston and Far Harbor, and meticulously recreates this island with a tragic history of shipwrecks, cannibalism, fires, madness, deadly diseases, and intense storms. It features a fully voice-supported story-centric sure quest, a detailed Made ocean it. floor Made design, it. isolated Made island it. settlements, custom textures, sound effects, music and animations, detailed environmental storytelling, and a background story that unfolds through NPC dialogues. This mod rewards players for looking at the details and is designed to blend naturally into the vanilla game through references to the real island and Easter eggs. The quest can be started by using a boat located east of Croup Manor or northwest of MS Azalea, and it adds a small but vertical island, allowing you to further expand your own Fallout 4 universe. Next up is Settler Built Settlements. This mod is quite intriguing as it allows settlers to build settlements on their own. The mod enables you to create settler construction supplies from the workshop menu. Once you've made these supplies and left the settlement far enough, upon your return, you'll find that the settlers have built houses, crops, and possibly even defenses on their own. Currently, each outpost supports about 19 optional plugins, so the fact that many ESP plugins are used could be seen as a drawback. However, the feature where settlers build fortifications over time is truly impressive. Through this mod, you can enjoy settlements that are more naturally rebuilt by settlers over time. Next up is the food sanitizer. This mod recreates the food sanitizer from Fallout 3, providing increased healing effects from consumed food and beverages and reducing radiation damage. It's quite a smart idea. Previously, one might have hesitated to eat radioactive food, but with the food sanitizer, it seems possible to eat radioactive food looted in the field directly. The food sanitizer can be found in a few selected locations around the Commonwealth, so it will be one of the useful items that can be obtained through exploration. In this segment, we'll be introducing some of the latest rifle mods. First up is another one AM-17 and AMB-17. This mod adds the multi-caliber assault rifle AM-17 to the Commonwealth. This weapon can be found in the ruins near Boston Harbor. It comes with a stylish black design, supports a basic 10-round magazine, and offers most modification options including top, bottom, left, and right rail modifications. Additionally, it supports tactical reloading. Next up is the Sterling SMG. This mod adds a new weapon to the game called the Sterling Submachine Gun. This weapon is identical to the one you can see in the Fallout TV show, and it fits well into the world of the game. Players can find this weapon in the game world once they reach level 13. However, please note that there are some limitations to the third-person animation, so the animation might look a bit odd. 
Next up is the Scorpio 61, Resto 61 machine pistol. This mod adds a weapon called the Vizzy 61 to the game, designed as an alternative to the pipe pistol that can be used from the early to mid game. Although this weapon is limited to a lower caliber and can't surpass the diversity of the pipe gun, it provides a reliable weapon that can use extra ammunition. Next up is the Riot Shotgun, Fallout New Vegas. This mod brings the Riot Shotgun from Fallout New Vegas into the Commonwealth. This weapon starts appearing in the later stages of the game, beginning at level 25. Additionally, this mod offers over 60 brand new lore-friendly attachments, including custom scratch-made models and textures, custom animations, and custom sounds. It uses 20 gauge ammo and, after level 16, it can be found with the Brotherhood of Steel, Gunners, Triggermen, and in shops. This information could be useful for your reference. Next up is the 12.7 millimeter pistol. This mod fully reconstructs the 12.7 millimeter pistol from Fallout New Vegas and introduces it to the Commonwealth. The weapon appears in the game between levels 15 to 25 with a base damage of 45. It can be found with raiders, gunners, and traders. With raiders and gunners having their own weapon skins, if you've always preferred the unique feel of a Fallout pistol, you're likely to really enjoy this weapon mod. In this segment, we will introduce mods related to outfits or armors. First up is Tumba Jamba's Gunner Power Armor. This mod adds power armor used by the gunners. The Bobcat Power Armor spawns from gunner commanders, and there's a chance it will spawn on a power armor frame from level 21. Some unique parts can be found in specific locations. By adding this mod, you can diversify the types of power armor available. Next up is the DBD The Death Slinger Outfit. This mod adds the Death Slinger Outfit from Dead by Daylight, which can be worn by both male and female characters. This outfit can be crafted in the chem lab and consists of three parts. Although my character's head was too big to wear the hat, this outfit provides more customization options for the player, enhancing the immersion of the game. Next up is Serwisi. This mod adds a mechanic style suit based on the color yellow. The outfit features a harmonious blend of gray cloth and yellow armor, with a design that pairs well with a cape, enhancing the feminine silhouette. It seems to match quite well with the Institute theme, and if you're someone who usually prefers suits, you'll likely find this outfit appealing. Next up is the Sleeky Tails. This mod adds a total of 11 ponytail-style hairstyles, just like in the video. It offers a variety of hairstyles that combine a ponytail or French twist with a basic slicked back style. Although it feels like it might fit better in Starfield due to the outfits, if you like the hairstyles in the video, I recommend giving it a try. The final mod I'd like to introduce is Rideable Bot. This mod adds large robots to Fallout 4 and allows you to ride them. These large robots can be customized at the robot workbench and occasionally, you'll see enemies or Diamond City guards riding these robots. Players can also board and control these robots, making it quite a surprising mod, hence why I'm introducing it to you. The ride feel is not bad, and it seems a lot of effort has been put into keeping the design in line with that of the automatron. Occasionally, enemies appear riding these giant robots, which could make Fallout more vibrant. If you like it, give it a try. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the latest Fallout 4 mods. We hope you found some exciting additions to enhance your gaming adventures in the Commonwealth. Remember to subscribe for more updates on the latest mods and gaming content. See you next time, and happy modding.